welcome to radar engineering course we continue here session on the radar cross section of a target so radar cross section is nothing but what that is about the the object okay when your signal sent to the object so that scattering signal reach to the a radar okay means what will be the area physical area of that particular object or what will be the property of that scattering object or whatever the target we have so that reflect a signal that is sent by the radar there so what will be the actual area of the device so that that device reflect the signal or return the echo signal so that area or that particular region is supposed to be called as a radar cross section so now that that area means what we supposed to consider that a device we have a radar here so it transmit a signal okay, if we have any object if supposed to be that object is supposed to be of a sphere shape spherical shape or that object is about a cylindrical shape or a flat surface then what happen so from that object your signals will be reflected okay because because of that incident signal so it will be reflected in any other direction so now our aim is about to see that how much will be the uh, signal that will be accepted by the radar there okay that is to be considered okay so incident signal on the device may be a larger because that object has a uh, area will be large but what happen only some partial some signal only few signal okay which are the echo signals are there that will reach to the radar there but other signals other waves is whatever the signal which are the we are incident on the object so that may be scattered there only few portion is to be returned to the device there now what is that particular portion of the signal that is to be received by the a radar there so that is that will be defined by the a radar cross section so we consider that what type of a targets we have and for a given particular target what will be the a radar cross section of the given target so that's why we supposed to know that what is the what in by the radar cross section and how to define that radar cross section in terms of a power density or a, a signal there okay power reflected from the given particular object there. so generally we we have discussed earlier that is a radiated power density okay this one is about a radiated power density back at the radar so it consists of what what will be the incident power so that is the what is transmitted power with respect to gain of an antenna and that area supposed to be considered that is about it 4 pi r squared and then that this one is about the echo signal okay reflected from so total power reflected is depending upon that what will be the transmitted power and it what will be the receiver power that sigma is nothing but the a radar cross section of the target there so now from this if you consider that okay if you consider that what will be the radar cross section so in that case that radar cross section is depending upon that what will be the power reflected from the object there what will be the power reflected from the object and that power reflected from the object it is depending upon that what will be the incident power there so we find out here this sigma is nothing but the radar cross section so sigma is equal to what what will be the power reflected okay what will be the power reflected from what from whatever the uh, object we have okay what kind of a object we'll discuss later and that power reflected that will reach to the radar there okay means we can say that it will be a towards source or a 
towards your radar there. And that is per unit solid angle. Per unit solid angle divided by. Okay, that is about our sigma we say. That is about radar cross section. Sigma is equal to power reflected per source divided by per unit solid angle. Unit solid angle means what? Generally, it is to be considered as a sphere there. Okay, so for a sphere, suppose we suppose to be considered this is about a sphere now. Now for a sphere there, so there may be the some particular shape there. That will be toward the at the center. So this is nothing but a unit solid angle for the given particular sphere there. Okay, so any object, there is some particular area. Okay, so that's why we are supposed to define that is about it in terms of a unit angle, solid angle with respect to the center of the sphere there. And then what will be the incident power? What will be the incident power density? And that incident power density again with respect to the for a given particular sphere, so that's why it's again a 4 pi. So if you solve it with respect to a radar cross section, that sigma is equal to what? A 4 pi r square. And we have the, we can write in terms of a power also. Okay, we can say that it is about the reflected power. And we can say that in terms of incident power. Or we can write in terms of what will be your electric field intensity strength okay that is about in terms of a electric field intensity we can write the both of it so this is about a radar cross now this in this case that r is nothing but that range from the radar to the object or a target there and this r pr and pi this is about a reflected power from the target and pi is nothing but the incident power Okay, incident power from the a source there. Okay, that is about we supposed to be consider uh, the density for the same. Okay, so in that case, if we write in terms of a, a field strength there, so in that case, electric field strength that is about a we have the ER, okay, that is about a re reflected, or we can say that ER is nothing but the echo here. Okay, that is nothing but the ER is nothing but the echo signal that will be reflected from the object or that is back toward the a source there or a target there and that ei is nothing but what a incident from the source or from the radar there so we will get a radar cross, cross section based on that what will be the incident power or what will be the incident electric field strength okay because if the strength is a larger the echo will be a larger and then echo whichever we have received at the target, it is depending upon that what will be the size or shape of the object. If that size and shape of the object is too large, then scattering will be, okay, whatever the scattering signal will be scattered at any other direction. Okay, again, we need to talk about that, what will be the area of that particular scattered object? What is the size of that particular object? And according to that, echo signal received at the radar that are depending upon the a uh, size another factor is about a frequency okay another factor is about a frequency we'll forget about a frequency right now we we'll just talk about that what will be the signal the frequency effect we will talk later that we will talk about when we see that a doppler effect and all in that case we talk about that frequency and all you just remember you just know that so what will be the incident power and what will be the echo signal received or echo signal reach at the uh, radar there. And now everything that transmitted incident power will be larger, that beam will be larger. But if your echo signal, what we can say that reflected from the object, okay, if it is larger, then and then radar is able to identify that the object is present. If that echo signal is a minimum or a low, then it is difficult to identify the object. So that's why we have earlier seen what will be the minimum signal power strength required to receive the signal. Okay, minimum signal. So 
we have defined some particular threshold if the level of the signal is above or beyond that particular threshold value then and then we are able to receive the a power there okay so that's that's about what we have seen regarding the error dark process so now then we will talk about that what will be the various types of a target or a shape so that your signal will be received by the object there. okay so this one you just remember that now we talk about that what are the types of a targets there okay or we can say that a object so this is nothing but a what we are talking about that cross section of a target so that target whichever the targets we have what will be the shape of that particular target okay so we will discuss here the target can be whatever the target they can be of a di different types of a shape okay we have a target the target can be what if supposed to be we consider that a target is about a sphere then if it is a flat here okay flat plate okay so we just consider that flat plate or a simple wire or we can say that a simple rod here okay so or we can say that a cylindrical shape or a cone shape so there are the various types of shapes of the object so if the target is supposed to be a sphere then for a sphere so what will be the scattering signal okay echo signal okay so we supposed to say that we have a radar there okay we have a radar and if our object is supposed to be a sphere now so now incident incident signal here that will reach to the sphere here but what happened due to that sphere if our incident signal reach here so your signal will be scattered in any other direction okay so this one happen so now out of this scattered signal out of this echo signal so which will be reach to the object there out of this particular scattered signal which signal is to be reach at the radar here okay so this one so we supposed to find out for a given particular sphere object so all the signal should not be reach here so this may be scattered in any other direction so some part of it, some portion of the energy some portion of the echo signal that will be reached to the a radar there incident signal will be larger okay but object size or object representation that will tell about that what will be the total area of the given particular target there. okay so what will be the your object here so according to that we can define so what will be the a cross section of the error dot so radar cross section if you consider that if it is a sphere here so for that particular sphere so generally the physical area of a sphere is defined by a pi okay that is because it is about circumference is about a twice pi r because r is the radius of that pi if we consider that if it is a sphere so then a physical area will be a pi r okay so in that case a radar cross section can be defined in terms of a sigma okay radar cross section can be defined in terms of a what in terms of a sigma and that sigma we supposed to say that it will be of a a radar cross section that is about sigma will be in terms of a a pi r okay so now we consider that if 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 that target okay if target is supposed to be a flat or a wire then what will be the total uh, total region that will reflect your signal okay so that's why we supposed to consider that generally we supposed to mention that for a given particular uh this one sphere here okay when we supposed to say that incident power there so cross section physical area of a sphere will be a pi r sphere but we supposed to define that what will be the scattering occur okay that scattered signal that scattering signal by this particular sphere it is a defined in terms of a wavelength there so that wavelength for example okay so so again that effect of a wavelength is there okay so we supposed to be consider that that for a given particular sphere we say that a circumference is about a twice by r now 
So if we reflect in terms of a wavelength, so in that case, twice by r lambda here. And we know that a cross section, okay, that is about a pi r square. So in that case, we can define in terms of a uh, that cross section with respect to pi r square, or we we can refer, refer this with respect to that, okay circumference of this particular object so we should define so what will be the region okay what will be the shape of the given object so according to that we supposed to find out the radar crossing now if we consider that we have the flat plate here okay so now i suppose to consider this about a flat plate now. or supposed to be there is a box Okay, there is some particular box is there, but we suppose to say that this shape, that flat shape is toward the radar. So now when your signal, that incident signal reaches to the flat surface, there is nothing but your flat surface now. Okay, or a flat plate. We suppose. So for this particular flat surface, there is some area. Okay, so supposed to be I am saying that this, this one is about a area of this a flat surface there means incident signal at this flat area of a uh, box okay incident signal will reach at the flat area of this particular box here so in that case what will be the radar cross section so in that case we supposed to find out what will be the total area for this particular flat shape so we can define a radar cross section in terms of what what will be the area with respect to the uh, region of a wavelength okay so define what will be the scattering occur from this given object what will be the type of a object okay scattering again it is depending upon the type of object so with whether it is a conducting one highly conducting one okay so according to that a cross section will be changes here okay so in that case for a object if that if that object is about a flat or even if we can consider that the object is about a corner object okay so that this way we supposed to be consider that this one is about a corner object okay this is nothing but a, a corner object so in that case so what will be the for the given particular corner object so this is nothing but the area okay this is nothing but a flat area surface so in that case that for a radar Radar cross section can be defined in terms of a 4 pi a square by a lambda there. Okay, that is simply with respect to the whatever the area of the a surface there. Okay, next is about if we consider that there is a wire, thin wire, or if supposed to be there is a rod. So I suppose to consider that a thin wire. Now this one is about it. They use a different for the same here. I consider that. Now this one is about a thin wire or a rod now for example if it is supposed to be rod so now when your incident signal will reach to the rod so according to the position of the rod with respect to the horizontal or a vertical what will be the angle here or what will be the incident signal angle with respect to this particular wire so according to that so reflection or a eco signal reach to the radar will be different so everything is depending upon that what will be the viewing angle okay what will be the viewing angle here from this a radar here okay with respect to this whatever the placement of the wire or a placement of the radar there. if supposed to be that viewing angle okay i suppose to consider that a 90 degree this way so in that case there may be a larger strength of echo signal. If that viewing angle, okay, okay, so it will be of what? Okay, 90 degree or a greater than the 90 degree or less than the 90 degree. Okay, so in that case, less than or a greater than. So in that case, that reflection or echo signal reach to the radar will be decreased. So we supposed to know that what will be the wave 
reach to the given particular or incident signal reach to the object whether that object cross section or object weaving angle okay match to the particular device so in that case we will get the echo signal so otherwise what will happen here so echo signal reach to the radar that will be reduced based on that what will be the surface there okay what will be the surface of this particular rod or a wire again we know that if that radar that, sorry if that rod or a wire if it is a conducting one okay if that wire or a radar if it is a conducting one so the property of that wire it's conducting because of that conducting property your signal get attenuated whichever the incident signal from the radar when it reach to the wire so then it will be attenuated okay because it has some resistivity property so it, your signal get attenuated so that's why echo signal will be reduced okay echo signal from this particular object that is to be reached to the radar okay that will be reduced okay so this way we can define a what type of a objects we have but if we consider that if our object is about a cone shape now supposed to be our object is about a a cone of a sphere here likewise then what will be the weaving angle okay now this one is about a cone shape now so cone shape object is there but so in that case so what will be the weaving object so generally if you see that beside it is front side of the beside will be of a cone shape okay this is about your cone now so now this one is about a cone shape now in that case so what will be the pair of radius for the given particular uh, cone and then what will be the length here for the particular cone here so according to that we can define so what will be the echo signal received at this radar thing. so cross section okay radar cross section if you consider that a cone so in that case so weaving angle according to the weaving angle there so we will get the different echo signal now this is about the weaving angle so from that we can say that weaving angle so we supposed to know that so weaving angle of this radar cross section it is depending upon that what will be the cone angle there. okay so for example i supposed to be consider that a cone has some particular angle weaving angle is a different this angle supposed to be a some particular theta i am supposed to consider that the theta here and in that case the radar cross section at this particular nose here okay from this particular weaving angle it's supposed to be about a theta is about a 30 degree 60 degree okay or 45 degree likewise in that case so what will be the radar cross that depending upon that what will be the radius of the particular sphere or whatever the cone we have okay and what will be your wavelength okay so this way we can define a radar cross section of the target there so next these are about the target we supposed to be considered and there may be a different shape of a target so that's why we say that the target will be a complex one so for the complex target so what will be the echo signal so echo signal is then whichever the echo signal received at the radar it is depending upon that what will be the reflected strength of the signal that's why we defined earlier that sigma with respect to what okay so that is about a power incident and all so we can say that a 4 pi r square we say that they find some of strength now okay r square by a the i square okay that we have defined so er and ei so it is about the field strain okay that is about electric field strength here 
for the echo signal as well as the input. But when we consider that echo signal there, that echo signal has some particular amplitude we say, okay, as well as that echo signal has some particular phase. Now that variation in the phase or variation in the amplitude, the target cross section is going to be changed there. Okay, because signal reach at the radar there, it's not only a single wave is reached. It is about a total signal reach at the radar. Okay, means what will be the resultant signal received at the radar? And that has some particular amplitude as well as a phase there. And if there is a changes in the phase, okay, because various signal viewing angle is different. So that's why there will be the variation in the phase. So that's why we're supposed to find out the radar cross section based on the what will be the total amplitude, uh, sorry, I can say that a resultant amplitude and a resultant phase of the a signal there. Okay, so that is be considered there. So if you consider the aircraft now, for example, so for the aircraft, if you consider that the shape of the aircraft, these are the plates here. The viewing angle, if you see from this side, is different. If you see from this side, is different. So from the different size, if you see from the back side, it will be a different. Now, if you see from the front side, so only this particular portion is to be covered by the radar. Means cross section or physical area of the object will be different. If you consider from the bottom, in that case, a physical area of the object will be bottom. Or bottom will be different. Here. Forget about this plate. Okay. If you see from the back side, so then viewing angle that cross section physical cross section or physical area of the object will be a different so what will be the uh, surface at which surface your signal will be incident okay so whether that incident signal will reach at the front side of the ob object here or incident signal reach to the okay bottom side of the aircraft or from this, okay, this side, okay, in India, okay, so the front, okay, so which, which, which side, your object, sorry, your, your incident signal, okay, reach to the, which particular size of the aircraft, side of the aircraft, so according to that, a physical area of the object will be changes, so based on that physical area, so we can define a radar cross section. Okay, we can define the radar cross. So, so that's why the radar cross section, if you consider with respect to the size, okay, with respect to the particular uh, side and all, so it will be changed. So if it is a flat surface or if it is a sphere, okay, or it looks like a rod there, okay, so according to that, a radar cross section will be changed. But in the case of, if you consider that a ship now, okay, because for a aircraft, it looks like a spare or a flat plate there. But if we consider that, if we have a ship, okay, we supposed to consider that a ship. Uh, so in that case, I supposed to be draw ship like structure now. This is supposed to be a ship now. So in that case, so area, okay, area covered by this particular region play a constant here. When, then again, from which side we are supposed to be looking for. Okay, incident. Okay, so, so in that case, we are supposed to know that what will be the physical area of the particular shape and incident area, okay, whichever the signal incident on this shape there. So that area is to be considered. And from this, we can define the a cross section Radar cross section for the a sheep there. So generally, we consider that here that ship will be of a larger size as compared to the aircraft. So in that case, a radar cross section, okay, for the given particular object will be a different here. 
and we say that particular cross section generally because it is about a larger one okay this particular shape of this particular if you consider that a ship here so in that case that ship has the cross section will be larger so in that case that cross section will be a different here so i supposed to be consider that for the viewing angle from which particular region we supposed to send the signal there so according to the viewing angle that radar cross section which changes there so for any target or any object we are supposed to know that what will be the amplitude of the receive signal okay this we can say that intensity or strength of the receive signal. and what will be the page information of the received signal and for each and every device or a object they some they have some particular size in terms of a square meter or a shape okay area in terms of a meter or a square meter something area so for each and every target so they have some particular shape and they have some particular area there so according to that radar cross section if we supposed to be defined again it is depending upon the what will be the operating frequency of the radar there. so in which band we supposed to be operating l band s band c band okay, x band k band okay likewise so in which particular operating band of a frequency we supposed to be work and according to that a radar cross section will be a change okay so we'll uh, go in detail about uh, for a given particular object so because it will take a more time to understand that for a given particular object okay, so what will be the frequency and all so we'll see okay so at the time of a navigation because we need to talk about again the antenna there okay when we talk about the radar cross section of a target then we need to discuss about a, a antenna okay so what will be the echoes and all okay so that we will discuss later okay so now we talk about the another topic here so what will be the transmitted power or it transmitter power so we have defined earlier okay so that is about a transmitter power we have defined earlier in that case of what we say that for a given particular radar that is a power transmitted okay from this power transmitter and generally we say that a power transmitter from the radar it is just like a simple train of a pulses is supposed to be transmitted these are nothing but a train of a pulses are transmitted so now for this train of a pulses if you define a power that is power in terms of what a what will be the train of impulses we have okay so so in that case so what will be the power transmitted we can define either in terms of a instantaneous power or we can define a average power but generally the power we are defining for the radar here that is about a transmitted power that will be in terms of impulses so that's why if it is in terms of people say so we could not define a instantaneous power for the pulse okay generally instantaneous power is defined in terms of a, a sine wave there. okay so here we supposed to define that because it's, a, it's not a full particular period of a cycle there so that's why we could not define so that's why we know supposed to define a transmitted power in terms of a average power here. because it is about a, a pulse that is that are on and off this one will be on period this will will be off period. so it that's why we can define in terms of a average power and that average power is depending upon that what will be the okay difference between the this two pulses here okay so we can define that the average transmitted power okay of a particular 
rectangular pulses here and that rectangular pulses has some particular width here so i suppose to say that is nothing but a bit i suppose to say that this particular width is a tau and this particular is nothing but a pulse repetition time or a pulse repetition period or we can define tp is equal to 1 by fp pulse repetition frequency this one is and this one is about the width so in that case we can define the average power we can define the average power is equal to what with respect to your transmitted power then a pulse width here and a pulse repetition frequency or we can say that transmitted power to or a f this way we can define that is about the average power and generally we know that that is about the average power here and the ratio of its whatever the transmitted power is nothing but what a duty cycle means this one on and off period means tau is nothing but on and tp is nothing but off tau by tau tp is nothing but the duty cycle of your uh, radar there okay because we are we are sending the pulses there or we can say that tau by tp is nothing but a duty cycle or we can say that tau of p is the but the duty cycle is equal to what the p average by the p that is about the duty cycle so if you consider that equation this duty cycle okay with respect to a transmitted power so then we can define a radar so modify equation of your radar so what will be the maximum range okay what will be the maximum range so in that case we can say that Instead of a PT, there will be a P average here. Okay, instead of a PT, this PT we can define in terms of a P average here, and then B, then AE. Okay, so that is about the effective area here. R max square is equal to what? P average. Then B, then AE. then what will be the radar cross section there then what will be the number of pulses there we are sending and okay then uh, what will be the surface we have then boltzmann constant and the absolute temperature then a noise figure here figure of merit we say then what will be the transmission okay suppose to be consider bandwidth here and then a signal to noise ratio for pulse one and yep this yep is nothing but what that is about a pulse repetition frequency this is about a r now this fp we say that it can be defined in terms of what pulse repetition frequency it can be defined in terms of what a average power or a transmitted power but if you consider that each a pulse we are supposed to consider in terms of a transmitted power or a average power instead of that we are supposed to consider that energy of a pulse what will be the energy of pulse energy of pulse is depending upon that what will be the width and what will be the a transmitted power so we can define here the energy of a pulse okay this is about the energy of a pulse is defined in terms of what ep is equal to what what will be the transmitted power and what is the width there and that that is again equal to what will be the average power and a with respect to that what is the repetition pulse repetition frequency so if you view sub Okay, this equation here. If y of p is equal to what p t into tau here, okay. Or we can define r max with respect to the pulse repetition frequency. Then we will get the r max. Okay, so we will get the r max here again. That is r max equal to. E P 
A E sigma N T I of N here. Then T four pi square K T zero F N bandwidth here and signal to noise ratio of a body. Okay, this way we can define. Or we can define in terms of a total energy, total pulse. So total energy of a pulse, because we have a n number of a pulses, so AT, with respect to n number of pulses, we can define AT is equal to what? N into whatever the total number of pulses. So we can define instead of a EP, we can define in terms of a N EP. Okay, so total number. So this way we Okay, this and this will be nothing but EP and N. It will be a ET here. So that is about your equation we will get here. Okay, so we can rewrite the equation again. So that will be a ET D A E sigma D I of N. Okay. Then we have a 4 pi square. Okay, so gap here 4 pi square then we have a t 0 fn we have bt here then a signal to nice ratio of a one okay this one is dark this one t 0 here fn then we have bandwidth here. Then we have a S by N. Okay. So this one is about your modified radar range equation. Okay. This one is about a modified radar range. And then uh, we have considered earlier what is the a pulse repetition frequency. Okay. And uh, from the pulse repetition frequency we have defined earlier what will be the ambiguous range and unambiguous range that we have defined earlier so we can say that these are nothing but your pulses of a radar here these are nothing but a pulses of a radar now and this one is about it we can say that these are the pulse one pulse two pulse and if we are receiving the signal, if we are receiving the pulses, supposed to be here, okay, in between that one and two. So in that case, the target can be identified. If we are sending the pulse, pulse repetition frequency, okay, we just talk about. If we have a target, okay, means we are sending the pulse one, and if we are receiving the echo of the pulse one, if we are receiving the echo of the pulse one before sending the pulse two, so then target can be identified properly. If we are receiving the pulse, okay, if we are receiving the pulse, that pulse one, after this, okay, after this pulse two, so then, then target will not be identified properly. Okay. Even if, if we are receiving the pulse, after the third pulse transfer. So then again, there will be the ambiguity to find out that range of the radar. So if we are getting the pulse within this one to two, so then we'll get that a range will be what? A unambiguous range. Range will be of unambiguous. So generally that unambiguous range and ambiguous range. Okay. So within one particular period of a time so how, how we are receiving the echo signal so that will be defined by the pulse repetition frequency or a pulse repetition time so within this is nothing but a fp okay that is this is nothing but what a time taken by the this is about a tp here and that tp is equal to what one by f fp is nothing but a pulse repetition frequency there. So with this, we stop here. So thank you all of you.